Well, the stock market took the news of the delay in uh, taxes initially pretty hard. Uh, the reaction, of course, at one point to Dow Jones Industrial Average had a 253-point decline before it started to find its footing. Uh, the selling more a reaction, I think, to confusion in a sense that the GOP could be on the verge of blowing it yet again. I will say that these sort of market reactions to news out of Washington, D.C., not just knee-jerk whining, but they also serve as warnings to lawmakers to, hey, get your act together. I mean, ultimately, Wall Street can live with the corporate tax cut coming a year later if it's confirmed that they know that's really going to happen. But Main Street, I don't think it's going to be nearly as happy as was promised. You've got seven, potentially seven tax brackets, no state and local deductions. And, and the market, well, it's going to have to probably just from here on out watch this saga with bated breath, hoping the Republicans get their act together and hoping to get back to focusing on the improving economy and improving confidence. Because that underlying fundamentals of this economy, to Steve Cortez's point, have been spot on. Uh, today's session, swift. A, a lot of profit taking, by the way, especially with the big time tech names, Alphabet, Google. Uh, also, you had big financials down on pressure as well, like Goldman Sachs. And what was really interesting, a lot of cash uh, flowed into beaten down sectors like retail stocks, brick and mortar stocks, believe it or not. Macy's up big. Uh, they offered uh, pretty reassuring guidance after reporting this morning. But then there was Kohl's, uh, which probably had a more impressive session if you consider the stock dived on their earnings release. It was a complete disaster. Nevertheless, you can see those shares turned around and closed higher. Yesterday, remember, consumer staples led the way. Today, brick and mortar stores. But we know this kind of rotation, while it underscores a challenge for the rally, beyond D.C. shenanigans, right? So because this market needs true leadership, and if it's not the big tech names, because they look like they may pause and pull back a little bit, what happens? Remember earlier this year when there was a shift into bank stocks? But the problem, of course, is that banks have moved away from their core business a long time ago. We're talking about just lending, and now they live and die by trading activity, which is ridiculous. By the way, another red flag for today's session is breath. Now, breath can be measured in a lot of different ways, winners to losers, up to down volume, and then there are milestones. On that note, this is the first session that I can remember in a long time where there were more, more 52-week losers than winners. On the New York Stock Exchange, 73 stocks closed at new highs, but 91 hit new 52-week lows. Same thing on NASDAQ, 73 new 52-week highs overshadowed by 79 new 52-week losers. Stocks are getting hammered. By the way, speaking of which, after the close, Disney posted a earnings miss and a revenue miss. Stock initially moving lower on that news. Uh, they may talk their way up. We'll see where it goes from here. Uh, news Corp posted results that beat the street. In fact, every business segment enjoyed revenue and EBITDA increases, management voicing extreme optimism uh, about its premium media businesses now. And they cite profound changes agreed to by Google in the way they rank news content. This is after almost a decade of campaigning by News Corp. NVIDIA has just been a monster. They crushed it on revenues, earnings, uh, 26 cents. They beat on the bottom line, and they gave consensus well above Wall Street. Management really feeling pretty good. Now, the initial move on this stock was lower, but I wouldn't be surprised to see it get higher. And this gets back to the premise about tech. Tech could be facing a period of consolidation and pullbacks. NVIDIA is up 93% for the year, 1,200% since the start of 2014. So these small pullbacks are no big deal. The bottom line is when stocks with improving fundamentals start to pull back, I take notice. That's not panic, folks. In fact, on the contrary, that's when you start to get your list together. By the way, a lot of you guys went to the site for the Chasing Breakout Support. If you didn't get a chance to get it, now's a good time. Go to wstreet.com for it and don't panic yet.